are brought up to have the new manage to be with the ease in disease. Today, we'll be talking about degenerative this disease, which is also known as polyposis, and the ways we can manage it. Degenerative this disease is the pain or radiating weakness an individual experiences due to a degenerative disc found in the spine. While this sounds straightforward enough, many patients with this condition are often left wondering how it will affect their lives and what are the best ways to manage it. Well, the speculation ends today as we get the expert advice from medical professionals as well as learn how to control symptoms and lead a healthier lifestyle for your back. Degenerative disc disease, also known as DDD, is actually part of the natural aging process and most people are actually affected by it to some degree throughout their lifetime. As many as 80% of adults experience lower back pain and it commonly affects those between the ages of 30 and 50. These people tend to feel pain and also some form of impaired mobility. I will now invite Nurse Sam to shed some light on this DDD matter and what it means to be a DDD patient. So, Nurse Sam, what exactly is DDD and what can it mean for the patient? DDD is actually a spinal condition that involves the breakdown of your intervertebral discs. So, intervertebral discs are actually discs found between two vertebrae of your spine. So, these discs are actually designed to absorb pressure and keep your spine flexible by acting as cushions. So, in a way, they are like short absorbers. So, without this cushioning effect, your discs will be unable to absorb stress and provide movements like bending and twisting. I see. So, could you tell us a little bit more about the risk factors which should predispose one to having DDD? As you have mentioned earlier, DDD is actually part of the natural aging process. So, as a person ages, it actually increases the risk of a person getting DDD. Proper nutrition, good back posture, and regular exercise also decreases the risk of getting DDD. However, high impact activity, poor lifestyle habits of smoking increases the incidence of DDD. So now that we're made aware of the risk factors which can predispose someone to getting DDD, let's just move on to the main concerns some patients with DDD might have. So I'm right to say that um, DDD can actually affect the entire spine. Yes, DDD can actually affect any part of the spine. However, most people complain of lower back pain, so which is indicative of lumbar DDD. Okay, so because lower back pain is the most common symptom, we're going to look at lumbar DDD today, am I right? Yeah. Okay, so let's just move on to the first symptom, which is pain. So how do you go about managing this symptom? Um, with a lot of people complaining about pain with DDD, so actually our main concern is to help patients manage their pain. So in addition to encouraging patients to get enough rest so that it minimizes the strain on their back, um, mild pain medication like aspirin are also usually prescribed. So aspirin actually reduces inflammation and relieves minor back pain. However, it's main, our main concern with the use of aspirin is that it causes stomach ulcers. So um, we do not recommend the use of aspirin with, on an empty stomach. So, is there anything besides aspirin that you can use if, let's say, the doctor does not recommend aspirin to be given to a patient? Um, muscle relaxants are also sometimes prescribed as it is able to reduce muscle spasm and relieve back pain. However, muscle relaxants have a significant risk of causing depression and drowsiness, so it's not recommended for long-term usage. Oh, okay, I see. So, let's say both aspirin and muscle relaxants don't work. Let's say the patient's in a lot of pain. Is there any way we can um, treat it in this case? If the pain is so severe and it's not manageable by oral medications, sometimes the doctors might prescribe epidural steroid injection, in short ESI. Um, ESI actually contains cortisol, which is actually an anti-inflammatory steroid. So, it actually helps to relieve pain of irritated nerve roots and decrease inflammation. Oh, okay. Thank you, Sam. With that, let us now take a look at a short sketch which can better illustrate how to manage your pain.
Uh, we would like to find out, are there actually ways we can manage pain without using medication? Some patients actually reported that the use of heat and ice packs are actually quite effective in relieving back pain because it actually helps in reducing inflammation. In addition, as mentioned earlier, good back posture and regular exercise actually helps in relieving back pain. We will now move on to our next segment in which we will show you the good and bad habits we employ when it comes to our posture. Following that, we will have our resident physiotherapist Freya to teach us some exercises in which we can use to strengthen our back. Sit up with back streaks and shoulder backs. Buttock should touch the backrest. Three curves of the spine should be present while sitting. It's helped to distribute body weight on both hips. Bend knees at the right angles and feet flat on the floor or on a stool. Rest arm on the desk or chair to keep elbow relaxed. Keep bones in the correct alignment. It decreases abnormal position which can increase wear and tear as well as add stress to the back. Good postures is also contribute to good appearance. Do not lift item more than 13 kg without assistance. Do not bend forward at waist with straight knee. When pick up items, bend knee and hips instead. Hold packages close to body with arm bent. The best position for sleeping is to lie on the back. It will be better to put a pillow underneath your knee to maintain neutral position on spine. When lying on the side, keeping a pillow between knee can help with the straight alignment of spine. Avoid sleeping on your stomach or on a saggy mattress. Regular exercise helps to prevent back pain and reduce the severity of flare-ups. Controlled progressive exercise also helps the back to retain its flexibility and strength. Back movement also promotes the delivery of nutrients to the spine. However, always consult a specialist before you start a new exercise program. The first exercise is the pelvic tilt exercise. This exercise helps to strengthen your abdominal muscle and stretches your lower back. To begin, lie on the floor flat. As you exhale, contract your abdominal muscle and draw in your belly button towards the floor. To check if you are doing this correctly, put a pinky on your hip bone and a thumb on your lowest rib. As you exhale, this distance should shorten. Hold for 5 seconds at this position. The next exercise is the knees to the chest. This exercise helps to relieve tension on your back and hence relieving pain. Okay. Uh, to begin, lie flat on the floor. Using your hands, hug onto your left knee and put it to your, towards your chest. Okay. Hold for 10 seconds and change leg. Finally, bring in both your legs. Okay. Repeat the exercise for 5 times. The next exercise is the lower trunk rotation. This exercise helps to increase your flexibility and mobility for your back. To begin, lie flat on the floor, rotate both knees to one side. You will feel the stretch on your lower back. Next, contract your abdominal muscle and rotate your knees to the other side. Hold for 5 seconds at each side. Repeat the exercise 10 times for each side. The next exercise is the leg extension. This exercise helps to strengthen your abdomen and lower back muscle. Begin on an all fours position. Do not set your backbone. Contract your abdominal muscle to make a straight spine. Stretch out your right leg and hold for 5 seconds. Change leg afterwards. Hold for another 5 seconds. Repeat each set for 10 times. Our spine supports our entire body. Thus, maintaining a healthy weight plays a part in minimizing additional stress to the spine. Maintaining a healthy weight is about balancing a calorie intake. While the amount of calories a person needs varies, a general guide would be 2,000 to 3,000 calories a day for men and 1,600 to 2,400 calories a day for women. A balanced diet includes bean sources of protein like poultry, seafood, like salmon and prawns, nuts like almonds, beans, and
and not forgetting legumes. You will also need two servings of vegetables a day and two servings of fruit a day. Pain medication may cause constipation, therefore it is important to ensure sufficient fiber intake from raw fruits and vegetables to prevent constipation. Also, it is important to drink plenty of water, at least 6 to 8 cups a day. Last but not least, ensure sufficient calcium intake by consuming low-fat dairy products. All of this is imperative in maintaining a healthy weight as obesity can add stress to the spine. Now that we've seen a few of the ways in which we can manage DDD, let's now look at the complications that someone might face if they do not manage DDD properly or if it's left completely untreated. We now have Sam again to enlighten us a little bit more on the complications. So Sam, can you tell us what kind of complications a patient with DDD might expect? One of the major complications of DDD is actually nerve damage. This can come in the form of radiculopathy, neurogenic bladder or Raynaud's phenomenon. Wow, those are a lot of big words. So let's just go through the first on your list, radiculopathy. Could you just tell us a little bit more about that? Simply put, radiculopathy is actually a disease of your nerve roots. So when the nerve roots in your spine are affected, the patient will experience pain, weakness, numbness in their legs. This is also the reason why patients with DD sometimes experience leg pain. I see. So what about neurogenic bladder? Could you share more about it? Neurogenic bladder is actually a result of damage to nerves that control your bladder tone and urinary mechanism. So as a result, patients might experience difficulty with passing urine or in severe conditions, they might not be able to pass urine at all. So what about the last item on your list of complications, Raynaud's phenomenon? Um, yeah, Raynaud's phenomenon actually refers to excessively low levels of blood flowing to your fingers and your toes. So this causes discoloration. This condition should be dealt with as soon as possible to prevent server damage. I see. So thanks once again for enlightening us so much on the conditions and the causes of DV. So um, just to wrap up, are there any final words? If your pain becomes very severe, with sensation shooting down your legs or even below your knees, and you're feeling weakness and numbness in your legs, and or even worse, um, you have bladder or bowel problems, you should actually visit a doctor immediately. Thank you, Sam. So that is all we have on Lapa Degenerative Disc Disease. We hope that this has been helpful in your management of the disease and that you'll spread the word and bring me healthy back.